Welcome back to Banner Monday. You know, here at the Assembly Call, we don't just want to make you a smarter IU basketball fan. We want to make you a smarter basketball fan, period. And that is the purpose of Basketball 201 here, where we kind of dive into some of the nitty gritty, talk about concepts, talk about offense, talk about defense. Actually, the last couple of weeks, we have, you know, really focused on, uh, you know, some IU centric, uh, you know, videos to kind of show you what Indiana is doing. Um, so it'll make you a smarter IU basketball fan too. Um, but here with us is Ben Ladner, our uh, our joint intern. He works at the uh, inside the hall as well as the assembly call. Really doing a great job with these basketball two one segments and writing some of our post game emails. Uh, had a great appearance on Assembly Call Radio last week. So Ben, you're really uh, kind of getting the full flavor of the inside the hall Assembly Call experience here this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a much wider experience than maybe I anticipated. So it's been a lot of fun. Well, you know, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Rob Finnessy. You know, you let a guy play, you see what he can do, <laughs> and he just kind of keeps getting minutes, and that's that's kind of what's happened here. So, hey, yeah, if if the comp for for me is is Rob Finnessy, I'm okay with that. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm. That's a, that's a not bad, not a bad comparison. Uh, yeah, that is definitely true. Um, all right, so we emailed earlier today. You said you wanted to talk about the offense with Juwan Morgan on the court. You know, I, I mean that it was such a stark difference yesterday. And it's not that Juwan did a lot with his minutes early in the game because he really didn't. And sometimes it takes Juwan a little while to kind of get in the flow and get going in games. And he didn't really have a chance. But boy, you know, once Indiana got down 45-35 in the second half and Juwan kind of decided, screw this, I'm getting ready to go. It completely changed the the complexion of the game. So I'm looking forward to kind of diving into this and seeing seeing what it was that Indiana was doing offensively with him. Yeah, so uh, the first video, I, we'll just dive right into it. Um First video I've got is from second start of the second half. And remember, you know, Morgan only played like two, three minutes in the first half because he picked up two early fouls and was out of there really, really quick. And so Indiana's offense for a lot of that first half was just Romeo Langford kind of trying to do stuff by himself. And it's you can understand that it. <laughs> you didn't have a ton of great alternatives. You know, sometimes you get Robert Finnessy slashing in to the lane. Sometimes Al Durham was, you know, he was hitting some shots. They'd get some nice drive and kick motion. Deron Davis was fairly effective, but really they didn't have that offensive anchor unless Romeo Langford was cooking. And I thought in that first half, he was a little more uh, hit or miss than he was in the second. And I think Jawan had a lot to do with that because not only is he such a good scorer and, and so efficient and versatile on the offensive end, just putting the ball in the basket, but his passing, his gravity, his playmaking, he just does so many different things that, you know, a lot of them, to, to, to use the phrase uh, that's become kind of a cliche, a lot of them don't show up in the stat sheet, but they really are valuable contributions. And actually, a, a few of the, the plays, the clips that I'll use here, Jawan doesn't get the credit. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't have any, any number that's going to show up as a result of these plays, but it's really him making these plays um, and that, that contributed to kind of the flow and the motion that Indiana got on offense in the second half that wasn't really there in the first half. So, First of all, apologies for this watermark in the bottom left. That's uh, this is the yeah, who, only viable. Who, who are we advertising for here? I can find. <laughs> um, so this is the first play of the second half. Indiana had the ball coming out of halftime, and uh, you got Robert Finnessy coming down the court, and they're just going to set up. It's a it's a quick hitter. This is a scripted play. Most teams do this coming out of halftime. They say, okay, here and and to start games as well. This is our first play. And they kind of draw it up and then go out there on the court and execute it. The rest of the half usually is a little less scripted. It's kind of more feel it out. But this is a designed quick hitter that they're they're looking to get either Juwan Morgan, Romeo Langford, or Robert Finnessy a shot here. So Finnessy goes into Morgan in the high post. We'll rewind it just a little bit so you can see it unfold. They're going to go to Juwan Morgan, and Finnessy's going to cut around for the handoff. And whether this was designed or not, I don't totally know, but it's a smart play nonetheless because Juwan Morgan – He's going to fake the handoff and you can see Daniel Gafford just totally bites on the DHO. He thinks that this ball is going to Rob Finnessy. Juwan Morgan, you know, in the blink of an eye turns the corner and drives and then draws this help defender from the paint. He's going to step up and Justin Smith just kind of camping out in this dunker spot is wide open. Now after the dump off pass Gafford blocks the shot. And, and that was kind of a theme all, all game long is Daniel Gafford being a force but you can just see the kinds of opportunity that Indiana gets because against most teams, that's going to be a dunk or a layup because most teams don't have Daniel Gafford. He's going to be a lottery pick for a reason. So you can just, the really quick motion that make that causes this to happen, you know, against most teams, you're going to draw this guy up and this center, Jawan Morgan's man is not going to be able to recover in the same way that Gafford did. And 
you're probably going to get two points out of that. So you used the term DHO in that dribble handoff, right? Dribble handoff. Yeah. Okay. Um, another thought there. I think that play is probably the play. I think it was soon after that, that Justin got benched. And I think a part of that is because of just him going up so weakly and allowing Gafford to block him again, um, which had happened so often in the first half. And in the post game, it yeah, sounded he had, like he actually had that dunk attempt in the first half as well. That, uh, you know, again, against most guys, probably a, a poster dunk, a highlight play, but against Gafford, it, he just didn't really have the strength. And Justin Smith is one of these guys where I kind of feel this way about OG Ananobi uh, in the NBA. In, in college, he was a great finisher, obviously. Um, but he's one of those guys that doesn't finish quite as strong as his physical profile would indicate. I think Jalen Brown is another good example of this, where it's like a big, physical, strong, like, you know, physically imposing wing with great athleticism. And you think, well, this guy should just be able to finish everything around the rim. And then you challenge him a little bit and you just kind of see some tentativeness. And I don't really know why that is, but for whatever reason, Smith, I think this has been a theme through the, the, the first four games of the year, has just had some trouble finishing over kind of these bigger guys who can actually hang with him athletically, which, you know, is, is maybe something the team looks to address moving forward. Well, it was constantly an issue last year, and it frustrated yeah. Archie. And he talked about it in the offseason that he thought it was going to be improved. So far, it hasn't. You know, to Justin's credit, he did try to have that one power finish in the first mm -hmm. half, and it looked like the ball just kind of slipped out of his hands a little bit, um, or, or he might have finished that one. But, yeah, I mean, that, you know, in that play with Justin, I mean, I'm thinking a little bit more patience, maybe a pump fake, something, you know, there. It, yeah, and, and I'm sure they talked about that at halftime. And that's part of the reason why Archie was so mad at that play. But but you're right. I mean, you look at the attention that was paid to Juwan there, and it immediately creates easier offense. It just didn't happen to lead to a bucket in that case. Yeah, so we'll see actually another example of that here with a play later from the second half. All these clips are going to be from the second half because, again, Juwan uh, did not really play in the first half. So same kind of setup. Now we have Deron Davis in for Justin Smith, because like we talked about, Justin uh, was tied to the pine for most of that second half. So fantasy going to come down and they're looking for Romeo Langford here on the wing. He had been kind of feeling it in that first half and was, had become sort of the, the go-to guy. The, the game's been stretched out a little bit in Indiana. You know, they need a jolt here. So they're going to go to Romeo Langford and involve their two best guys, Langford and Jawan Morgan. And, you know, you'll see this a lot in all levels of basketball. When you need a bucket, you get a play that involves your two best players. It's, I mean, it's that simple. So they're looking for the, the pick and roll, side pick and roll going middle with Jawan Morgan over here on the right wing. Romeo Langford's the ball handler. And so when Jawan comes up to set the screen, as he's moving up, Romeo kind of goes early. And that's not a, a bad thing because you can kind of see he's got a crease here. Gafford's waiting for him, uh, obviously, at the rim. But, you know, he, he's looking to kind of get into this uh, mid-range area and as Jawan Morgan comes up, Romeo goes. And what that does is it causes Jawan Morgan's man, he can't follow Jawan all the way out to the wing because Romeo's man is caught a little bit off guard. And so you, you need the second defender to come up and take away this drive. And so Jawan Morgan, instead of rolling, and this is where adding that three-point shot to his game really comes in handy, because instead of rolling, he can just kind of float out here into space behind the three-point arc here. And as Romeo draws two defenders, he just kicks the ball out and it's a catch and shoot three. And, you know, that's a shot that Jawan Morgan didn't have in his bag as a sophomore. It's a shot that kind of came and went last season. And it's a shot that we don't know if it's going to stick, you know, permanently this year. But if it does, I mean, that's that's just a completely uh, new weapon that he has in his game. And, and it gives Indiana, you know, a, a, a really uh, an added element of dynamism and something that could really open up a lot of things in their offense. So it, it's really a play just as simple as a two man pick and roll. And it's really not even a pick and roll because there's no contact on the screen. There's no Romeo Langford doesn't even use the screen. It's just kind of two really good players playing off of one another and just reading the game as it comes. And a guy who's obviously made big improvements to his jump shot, worked really hard on it, knocking down a shot. He is shooting the ball with a lot more confidence this year. Yeah. I thought last year he came out and tried to prove that he was a three point shooter but it was almost like you could tell he was trying and it didn't work. And then eventually, you know, four or five games in, he realized, oh, yeah, I need to go back inside. And then he started dominating. This year, he just looks like a confident three-point shooter. And so I think that's been a big difference. And he's going to get better looks this year, given all the offensive talent around him. So yeah, why... and I, th I think he also knows, too, that if he wants to get drafted this year, and this obviously isn't his primary concern because 
you're focused on the season and winning at the college level, but you know, it's gotta be somewhere in the back of his mind that if he wants to play at the NBA level, he probably needs to shoot that jump shot at a decent rate. And so, you know, that, that can be a big motivating factor for a guy who after this season, is not going to have any more time left in college and really needs to prove it this year? Yeah, and those things can go hand in hand. Cause if he's, you know, shooting them and making yeah. a decent enough clip of them, that's good for Indiana. So why not run that two man game more often? Why not, why not put Romeo and Juwan there on the same side of the court more? It's a good question. Um, I, I don't totally know. I, I actually would like to see it more often. Some of it was what Arkansas was doing. Defensively, they actually showed zone a few times. So that makes it tougher to run pick and rolls because you're not really, you know, you're not really running it to like displace the defenders because you're, you're just moving into a different zone where there's another defender. Um, so the, the defensive coverage is a little bit different there. I think the presence of Daniel Gafford could have prevented them from doing that because his length and his athleticism mm. He was really bothering uh, a lot of shots. And so maybe you don't want to involve him in that action because you know that it's almost like, you know, teams will do this with Draymond Green where they'll they'll run pick and rolls, but not with Draymond's man. And so it, one of the benefits of putting him on the other team's best player is that you just can't run pick and rolls with that guy because you're running it into an elite defender. And so that part that could have played a role in this, but I'm with you. I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of this, especially with Deron Davis on the floor because then Gafford's not guarding Jawan Morgan. You can, you know, go at weaker defenders and kind of create some more space in that sense. But, you know, also I think another reason could be that, you know, Jawan really had it rolling in the post. I mean, he was really effective there finding guys. The next clip I'm going to show is him kind of passing out of the post, being a playmaker from there. And he's obviously an effective scorer in the post. And then the, maybe the, the third reason is that that press that Arkansas was running was really speeding Indiana up. Yeah. And so a lot of the time their possessions were just come down kind of probe and semi-transition and shoot a quick shot. And so they weren't really getting into their half-court offense quite as much as maybe Archie Miller would have liked. Makes sense. So this next clip is, like I said, passing out of the post. We've got Jawan Morgan down here on the right block. Rob Finnessy is going to enter the ball. Spaced floor, well, sort of spaced floor. Deron Davis is over here on the opposite block. Al Durham, Romeo Lankford spotting up on the opposite side of the floor. So Finnessy is going to enter the ball. And Morgan faces up. He's not going to back down. He, he faces right up. But right as he's putting down that first dribble, Finnessy's man comes over on the double. Quick double. They, they know that Morgan is, you know, a, an elite scorer, and they want to get the ball out of his hands. So what he does, he reads it immediately, and he, he sees the double team coming. He takes that first dribble and right away goes to Rob Finnessy on the, on the perimeter. Really good read. Quick swing pass to Al Durham. And that, that double team creates a vacuum out on the perimeter because Durham's man has to step up and take Finnessy. This guy over here on the weak side, he's got a tough choice. He either has to step up and take away Al Durham, or it, which, which then leaves Romeo Langford open, or he's got to stay home on Romeo Langford, Indiana, maybe Indiana's best shooter, and, and take away his three. He kind of does neither. He just kind of stays in no man's land, stunts toward Durham, but not enough to really stop the ball. And so that gives Al Durham a wide open lane and Deron Davis's man has to step up to stop that dribble penetration and Durham just reads it and drops it right off for a layup. Fairly simple play. And what I like about that is how quickly Indiana was able to attack that double team. That's what you have to, when you, when you pound the ball and, and try to take your time and work against a double team, you're just giving them more time to recover and, and get back to their assignments. You have to attack quickly. They got a good kick out. They got a good swing pass, and Al Durham made a nice drive, a nice quick decision to drop it off to Deron Davis, a nice simple read of the defense, and they're able to get a quick, easy basket. That's what you have to do against those double teams. And, and Juwan, I think to his credit, has become better at reading those this season as a senior. That's a great point. One of these weeks, we need to do a feature on Rob Finnessy feeding the post. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to be like pornography for IU fans. <laughs> especially after the last decade of watching guys try to feed the post and not be very good at it. Yeah. But he's, he's consistently good at it. I mean, he makes the simple passes and he also, what I love about it, sorry, this is a total tangent, but it just made me think of it is how he will dribble himself into position to be able to make a better post pass. Like his understanding of that as a freshman. So let's, let's mark that down. Cause I think one of these yeah. weeks we should do uh, we should do a, that's what it's moment. all about. It's just, it's, it's just about creating the angle. You know, I think, yeah, 50 to 70 percent of turnovers on on post entries are not due to anything the defense is doing really it's just it's just trying to make a pass from an angle that isn't conducive to feeding the post so yeah that's a great point is, is creating that angle and you can also do that 
in in a variety of ways. You know, you can swing the ball, you can dribble the ball. Uh, it it can depend on how the the guy posting up is positioned, and you can you can either have him move a different position. You can have the ball. Tim Duncan was great at this, where if a guy was fronting the post. Duncan would just hold that position. The Spurs would rotate the ball and create a passing angle, and it's a wide open duck in because Tim Duncan was just so much smarter than everyone else. Um, anyway, that's a tangent off of the tangent. So we'll... I, I love your insistence on NBA. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what I'm familiar with. Uh, know, okay. Tim Duncan, you know, it's it's anytime I have a chance to talk about Tim Duncan, I, I have to take it. So <laughs> yes. Next, uh, this is actually a kind of a, a good segue because this is a, a Duncan esque play, and and kind of what I was talking about. Um, the, the same idea of, of kind of sealing in this is, this is again, Jawan Morgan and Indiana gets a fast break. It's Romeo Langford grabbing the rebound. I've talked before about Romeo Langford's grab and go ability, his ability to just get a rebound and at six, six, push the ball up the floor, handle it. I think could be a really valuable weapon for Indiana this year, but at any rate, you notice as soon as he gets the rebound, Jawan Morgan, right at the start of this clip, you can tell is dead set on beating everyone down the floor. And so he takes off, he sprints, and then right around the, the three-point line, he slows up, puts his hand out. Langford sees him, but you can tell he's not really sure if he's got this passing angle. Running straight down the middle of the floor for those who uh, are not on the video. And then around the free throw line, you can see he puts that right arm into his defender. And he doesn't push off, but he just kind of holds him there. It's just sort of this, this subtle arm bar that the best players and the most experienced players are really good um, at getting away with and Langford just floats the pass over the defender. And what this arm bar does is not only create horizontal space between Morgan and the defender and, and give him space to catch the ball, but it also neutralizes the defender's jumping ability. So he can't jump up and, and grab this ball because he's got an arm in the side of his body. So Romeo Langford just floats it right over Morgan catches. And it's, it's, you know, if this defender is in a position where he either has to let the layup go or foul him. And so he chooses to let it go. Easy layup. Um, that's the kind of thing where you can you can look to do that maybe two, three times a game. Just get that early offense, the early seal. When your big man beats everyone down the floor, you know, if he just posts up right away and gets that early seal, and sometimes it'll be in the form of a duck in where he'll, you'll, you'll get them right around the charge circle and just seal someone underneath the basket early on in a possession. You know, that's a good way to kind of generate early offense where you don't have to work against a set defense and you can get some easier shots. That was such a great pass from Romeo. Just yeah. the timing of it, where the pass was. But what I and I noticed that live. What I didn't notice was what Juwan did. I mean, you, know, you noticed the sprinting, but that subtle move that you said, you know, with that arm bar and not pushing off where you could get called for a foul, um, but just holding it there to hold that position and create that seal. That was great. I mean, by the two of them. I mean, that was yeah. just that was beautiful. And again, it's, it's this idea of just involving your best players, you know, put the ball in the hands of one of your two best players, run a two man game with the other guy and more likely than not, good things are going to happen. And so, and I, I think as the season goes on, Indiana will realize that I think it's important to get people involved, run kind of an egalitarian offense. I think that's what Indiana wants to do, but ultimately I, I think they'll get to a point where as they play these better teams, they're going to need their two best guys to be the two best guys and play like that because they've got two maybe fringe all American talents on this team. And there are going to be certain points in the season where Indiana can't win unless Romeo Lankford and Jawan Morgan play like it. Do you have so any the more last, videos? Oh, one more. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just asking if you had any more videos. I've got one more. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's kind of more. similar to one that I showed earlier. It's another pass out of the post. And again, it's Finnessy feeding the post. Um, so maybe we can recycle these clips when we go back into that <laughs> post feeding segment. But they're going to enter it in. Jawan Morgan is on the left block, seemingly against Daniel Gafford. And again, you can see as soon as he catches the ball, he's got his head up. I think early in his career, and, and a lot of players are like this, and, and even upperclassmen still do this sometimes, they, they catch the ball and they are either looking at the ball or they're looking at the basket or they're looking you know, at the guy who passed it to him or somewhere that is not the rest of the floor. And so here, Morgan is just reading what's going on on the floor. He's looking at where the defense is and he's seeing where he might be able to find an opening. So Romeo Langford is going to move out of that corner and kind of up closer to the top. And Arkansas's defense right now is not balanced. They've got basically two guys, you know, three guys in this, in this triangle right here and two on the weak side of the floor, but no one's really guarding anyone. So that quick double comes, but both of these guys double. 
And so you're almost triple teaming the post. Unfortunately for Indiana, their spacing is not ideal with these three guys right up top because you can basically have this guy stunt and recover. And then this guy can guard two players at once because they're so close together. So what they do is Al Durham is going to come around this right side, move into the corner as Rob Finnessy goes to the wing. Morgan, keeping the ball away from the defense, takes the one dribble still with his head up. And notice Durham kind of coming through here to the, the right corner. And Morgan's just going to throw a beautiful pass through the defense to the opposite corner. And that's where the double team hurts Arkansas because now that Indiana has spaced the floor and they're able to spread these guys out, this defender who was guarding Rob Finnessy has to move over and take Al Durham. Otherwise, it's a wide open corner three. And so Durham, again, uh, like he did a couple clips ago with, with that nice feed to Davis, he just reads the defense, makes a simple play, swing pass to Rob Finnessy, who hits a clutch three and ties the game with under a minute left. So this was this is uh, one of the ways that Indiana was hurting Arkansas down the stretch. And I think, again, one of the big improvements that Jawan Morgan has made is just when teams double team him, he is able to just punish them. And I don't think that's a pass that he sees a year ago. It's definitely not a pass that he sees when he's a sophomore. I think this is these, these are things that he's added to his game over his career. And it's been really, really fun to watch him kind of add these multiple levels to his game uh, as, as he's matured and gotten better as a player. And I think this season, I, I mentioned it on, um, I think it was last week's Basketball 201, but th the thing that I'm most interested in to see from Juwan Morgan this year is how he improves as a playmaker and how Indiana uses him as such, because he's going to command double teams in the post. You know, he's, he's going to be able to do those kind of fake DHOs that, that we saw earlier. He's going to be able to attack in a lot of different ways and he's going to draw a lot of defensive defensive attention. And so, you know, is he a good enough passer and a smart enough player to find open guys and to catalyze the offense by moving the ball rather than just scoring it? I think the answer is yes, and thus far it has been, but I'm interested to see if that holds up as the season goes on. I think the two biggest lessons that we've learned from the Marquette game and from the Arkansas game, you know, the first two games against actual real competition are, you know, number one, Romeo has an ability to go get buckets that yep. you just, you can't really teach and that this team was sorely lacking last year. And that even when he's not handling the ball well and playing good defense, it's going to keep Indiana in some games like it did yep. against Arkansas. That's clear. The second lesson through you know seeing Juwan play two really good halves against Marquette, one really good half for Arkansas, and then not being there the first half, is that this team plays better when he's kind of leading emotionally and also when they're playing through him in half-court offense. You know Those two things seem like the biggest things that we've learned about this team early on, and they maybe seem like things that we kind of thought we knew, but now it's really been confirmed with these two games. I totally agree. And, and actually one of the, one of the two observations I noted in yesterday's post game email was Indiana's at its best when Jawan Morgan is assertive and they, they need him to assert himself. And again, it, it just goes back to this idea. And I think both of the two points you just made, you know, get, get, get at this. You need your two best players to play like your two best players. And it's clear who the two best players on this team are. And I think this is going to be a dominant theme uh, all season long is just Romeo Langford's you know, immutability as a scorer, just there are certain things you can't take away from him. And then Jawan Morgan, just the versatility ability to do a little bit of everything uh, is going to, that, that has to be, I think the catalyst of this offense. And then you let other guys play around that. Ben, another great edition of, uh, of basketball 201. So you will not be in the arena for UT Arlington or for UC Davis, right? I will not. I will not. Um, or nor will I be in the arena for Duke, but oh, that's unfortunately, right. but I will that's be back right. for whatever is the home game after Duke. What is the home game? I don't, I don't think it's anybody good. I don't remember what the schedule it's, is. It's too far down the line for me to have uh, concerned myself with it's this, well, this early. Well, now we got to look. Oh yeah, that's right. We play Northwestern big 10 season starts uh -huh. that we, that's right. It's the gauntlet. We got Duke, then Northwestern, then Penn state, then Louisville, then Butler. So we got uh, we got these two games. We need to get guys healthy because that's yeah. the other thing that maybe the third lesson is oh, how yeah. important Zach McRoberts and Devonte Green are to this team, especially. Yeah, I mean, just having defend, like you know, bodies who can yeah. who can play. I mean, I, Romeo played it 38 minutes yesterday. They just did. They don't really have any any alternatives on either end of the floor. It's just uh, that wing depth. When you take one or two guys out of their rotation, it just gets really dangerously thin. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just based on some of the reactions, not all of them, it is a minority of reactions. But for folks who walked out of yesterday's game feeling disappointed in the way that Romeo played, and I get it. There were ball handling mistakes galore. His defense left a lot to be desired. 
But for a freshman in his fourth game to do what he did on the road against Arkansas and to provide what he provided offensively, like, and the rebounding, because I thought his rebounding was outstanding. Yep. Like, let's be fair to him, you know? Like, yeah. on balance, he brought a ton of positives to that game. So, again, that's not most people, but just for those who walked away from that game disappointed in Romeo, I I just think that there are maybe some things that you're not that. seeing that he really brought to the table that were extremely important. Yeah, so. I would agree. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the end of this segment. Excellent job, Ben. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Coming up, it is time for our opponent preview. Uh, Indiana faces UT Arlington tomorrow night. We will talk about them, preview that game here. Coming up. Stick with us here on the Assembly Call.